Coming up on Hands on iOS, I want to show you how to take control of your notif- Hello? No, no, I'm, I'm trying to record Hands on iOS. Yeah, actually, uh, funny enough, I'm doing Do Not Disturb, so I should, yeah, I should, yeah, yeah, I should probably turn that on. Okay, bye. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm going to show you how to use Do Not Disturb on your device, so check that out. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Hover. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Whether you're annoyed with those light up screen notifications in the middle of the night, or you're driving and you'd rather not be disturbed, or maybe you're in the middle of a podcast and you don't want a call to come through, you should be taking advantage of Do Not Disturb. It is a powerful tool with many different types of, of options and functionality that let you control when and if you receive notifications from whom and at what time, there's so much to dig into. So let's talk about do not disturb for iOS. So first things first, we gotta launch the settings app. Within the settings app, you will find a feature called do not disturb. If I tap on that, it does look a little bit intimidating. There's a lot in here, but we're just gonna go through piece by piece and talk about it. So you can see that I have Do Not Disturb activated right now because I am doing a show and I do not want to have calls or notifications coming in while I am doing it. But say you wanna go ahead and have it set up so that after a specific time, you don't have notifications bugging you on your device. This is really important. Our brains, as much as we, we strive you know, uh, day to day for self-control and uh, the ability to sort of overcome the desire to, to be very in tune with our devices and we wanna pull away and things like that, it can be kind of difficult. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just sort of the psychological way that our brains work. And so one of the ways that you can help yourself for boundary setting particularly if you are in a shelter at home uh, position right now, is to use Do Not Disturb. It's very easy to receive those notifications after your work shift ends and feel like you need to take care of them at that point in time as opposed to the next day, or while you're driving to receive notifications and feel like you need to answer them right away. And in many cases, in many non-emergency cases, those are things that you could wait on, it makes it safer for you uh, or in the case of setting boundaries, makes it better for your mental health overall. So one of the options, one of the ways that you can do this is by setting up a schedule. If I tap to turn on the schedule option, then I can say from a specific time to a specific time, do not notify me. Do not show me calls and notifications. So I might set this up from say 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. I have, and you can see they call it quiet hours here. Do not disturb me from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Then I can have it set up the lock screen option that will actually darken the lock screen so that when the phone turns on, the lock screen is at a dimmed volume and automatically sends notifications to notification center, meaning they're not going to pop up and sort of blast you in your eyes. They'll just load up into your notification center and it will keep the lock screen dim. So turning that on lets that stay dark. It won't light up your screen. Now, let's talk about silence. So when I have Do Not Disturb turned on, do I want the phone to remain silent regardless of whether my phone is locked or do I only want it to be silenced when the phone is locked? Well, for me, I often do have my phone unlocked even whenever Do Not Disturb is turned on. 
but I need my phone to remain silent regardless of whether it is locked, so I have mine set to always. You can make that decision because it could be that you're just having this turned on at night when you go to bed, and so while the iPhone is locked may be the option that you want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the schedule because I have a schedule set up in a different spot, and I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. But let's go to the next step. Now, with your phone, you can choose to allow calls from certain people. So think about it like this. There may be important people in your life who you feel should be able to bypass that do not disturb functionality. So even when I have it on, I still want to receive calls from mom or I want to receive calls from my sister or whomever it may happen to be, your partner, whoever uh, it is, is right for you. If I tap on allow calls from, I can choose specific contact groups. I can choose specific uh, folks, so favorites, no one, or everyone. So that's saying that even when I have Do Not Disturb turned on, I still want calls to come through. I just want my text messages and notifications from apps to be turned off. So as you can see, I have mine set to no one, and I don't want any calls. Frankly, I don't want calls whenever Do Not Disturb is turned off, but that's, that's beside the point. Next is, even when I have my phone set to not allow calls from anyone while Do Not Disturb is turned on, I can choose to go a second step with this. This means that if someone were to call you, if I have this, this uh, option turned on, if I toggle this on, it means that if someone calls you, they're not going to be able to get through Do Not Disturb as long as that's the feature that you have. So in my case with no one, someone calls me, they're not gonna be able to get through to me. However, if they call me again within three minutes of the last time they called me, which sort of conveys a sense of urgency, then it can bypass Do Not Disturb. That is a really helpful function. And so by turning that on, it says, okay, although I have Do Not Disturb turned on and I don't want to receive notifications when someone's calling me, chances are if they're calling me again within three minutes, then it's probably an emergency. And so we do want that to go through. So I can turn that on. Unless you have someone who abuses that uh, <laughs> that boundary, in which case you may want to toggle that off. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by Hover. In this vulnerable time, stay in touch by creating a domain that represents you. Choose from more than 400 domain name extensions. If you're an artist, Hover allows you to create a domain to showcase your talent with the extension .art. Get a custom domain for each of your art pieces. .art can be used as a catalog to showcase each design with descriptions and details. Get your creative juices flowing and let Hover give you the stage. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit. Up next is what I consider to be the most important feature that exists within Do Not Disturb and maybe one of the most, the most wise and helpful features that Apple has, has given to iOS in a very long time. Uh, it is called Do Not Disturb While Driving and it is a feature that I 1000% believe has and does save lives. Uh, it is an incredible feature that says, hey, when I am driving a car, I do not want to receive notifications on my device. I don't want my device to light up. I don't want to see anything that's, that's going on on my device. I wanna just be able to drive and get to my next destination. However, if I'm in the middle of messaging with someone, or if someone's trying to get a hold of me and they send me a text, you can let them know, please, that I am currently on the road and I'm about to drive to a new location and send them a message saying that, and then give me the rundown of the messages that I missed when I get to a cer certain location. That's do not disturb while driving. So let's talk about it. This feature lets you activate it based on different conditions. So whichever condition is met, it can automatically activate. So I'm gonna tap into activate, and there are three options here. Automatically, when connected to car Bluetooth, and manually. When a company makes a Bluetooth connected stereo system uh, for the car, there are certain profiles that they can set as part of the Bluetooth connection that comes through. And so your head unit is, is the name of the, the contraption that may have a, a CD uh, player, that may have Bluetooth functionality, that may have all these different things built into it, maybe it's CarPlay. 
it can tell your device, hey, I am in a car. And so, or I am, I am a car's head unit. I am car Bluetooth. And by doing that, then this, this device, your iPhone, knows, okay, you are currently connected to Bluetooth in a car, and so I want to go ahead and turn on Do Not Disturb While Driving. Automatically uses the phone's sensors to determine if you're in a car. I don't know many people who can go more than, say, 50 miles per hour in, uh, in a given direction, and neither does your phone, and so it can figure out hey, this person's probably in a car based on how they're moving, how quickly they're moving, et cetera, and use that to turn on Do Not Disturb While Driving. So even if you have an older car that doesn't have Bluetooth functionality, you can use the automatic function to turn that on, or manually. And if you saw my last video on Control Center for iOS, then you know that activating Do Not Disturb While Driving manually can be as simple as swiping down from the top right corner of the screen and tapping on a little car icon to turn on Do Not Disturb While Driving. Lastly, there's an option for CarPlay which says, if I am connected to a CarPlay system, then please turn on Do Not Disturb While Driving. I have that turned on as well because it's the same as connecting to car Bluetooth in that sense. If it knows I'm in a car, I want this feature to be turned on. Now. How do we go from there? So along with not showing you any notifications on your phone while it's in place, when you get to where you're going, and for, my, for me, for example, I have Bluetooth connectivity in my car. When I turn off the lock on my car and my phone disconnects from Bluetooth, my phone lights up and it shows me all the notifications that I missed while I was driving. I don't get notifications from Instagram, from, from uh, Twitter, from messages, from Slack, from anything while I'm driving. But as soon as I get to where I'm going, it shows those that I missed. Now, it can go one step farther by actually notifying you, your contacts that you may be in touch with to say, hey, look, I'm driving right now, and I will receive your message when I get to where I'm going. But if it is an emergency, then reply with the word urgent, and it will push through the message and light up your screen. So if you do have that concern that, oh, I want to have Do Not Disturb While Driving turned on, but somebody might be trying to get in touch with me, then that is what this allows you to do. So I'm going to choose Auto Reply To. This is who you want to have uh, the ability to auto reply to. So I have mine set up with just my favorite contacts. So my mother, my partner, um, my... Uh, the, the, the you know, producer, whomever it happens to be, when they text me, then if I am driving, it will send the message that I've set up to let them know. You can choose to have that not be a feature that you want enabled. You can have it so that it's just recent folks that you've been in contact with, and you can choose to have it so that, well, if it's somebody that's in my contacts, then that's obviously someone that I want to know uh, that I can't talk back to them at the moment, and so you can choose all contacts. Then, the auto reply. This is the choice of what you want to have sent to them. So in this case, the basics of, uh, I've got this turned on, I'll see your message when I get where I'm going. That will send, and then another message goes in after that that says, uh, if you want to break through, do not disturb, you can send urgent, and then the message will go through that they sent you. So the second they send you a message while you have do not disturb while driving, do not disturb while driving turned on, they get that message sent back to them in return, and they know, okay, Mike is driving right now. He's going to see it whenever he gets there. Uh, it shows up in your text message transcript, so you can see right there where that message sent, and they know, okay, you were driving. This, I, again, find so helpful, because as much as I do try to have that self-control and do do a good job of making sure not to use my phone while I'm driving, by eliminating that sort of urgency that builds up in the brain when you do see a notification, it says, oh boy, either it's FOMO, or it's concern that you know you're not responding to someone that needs to be responded to or what have you, if you completely eliminate that, that anxiety that sort of builds up, then you're not worried about it. You're not likely to then go and look at your device. So I do find that to be very helpful in controlling the anxiety, if not just the actual action of using my phone whenever I'm driving. Uh, and so that is the, the, the final feature there of do not disturb. Um, so you can have it just do not disturb your notifications, you can schedule it, or with driving, do not disturb while driving. But I did want to mention, as I said I promised, um, scheduled is one way to set up do not disturb, but there is another way, and if you have seen, I did a video for Hands on iOS all about the clock app, 
And one of the features within the clock app is bedtime. iOS will actually use your bedtime as a way to set up do not disturb. So when I set my bedtime, and I can choose what, uh, how soon before bedtime I want to be reminded, hey, it's about time for you to go to bed, set a wake up sound and those kinds of things and track my time in bed. It can also set up do not disturb during bedtime. So not only does it turn on do not disturb, but it also darkens the lock screen just like your schedule do not disturb does and keeps all of those notifications completely unavailable to you while notification center is is uh, is not accessed. So it goes a one it goes one step further than the standard schedule essentially, where the standard schedule do not disturb sends those notifications to your control center so that they're available there. Do not disturb during bedtime actually does not show them on your screen. So if you were to wake up in the middle of the night and you know want to run to the restroom or something like that and come back, if you unlock your screen, you're not going to see all those notifications on your screen if you're like, oh boy, I've got to deal with those before I go back to bed. No. It completely keeps them gone. You have to swipe up to actually see those notifications if you want to. Otherwise, they are completely unavailable to you even whenever the screen lights up. It's very nice and it's a good way to keep your <laughs> sort of lizard brain that we all have from wanting to go in and, and make sure that we respond to those notifications that may have come through. So it's just a bit of boundary setting that I think is very important for all of us. And whether you're using it with the the bedtime option or right from do not disturb within the settings panel. It's a way to sort of say, look, from this time to this time, I'm not taking any calls. I'm not receiving any notifications. And it lets you pull away from your devices. And particularly at a time when some of us are working from home or are completely doing everything from home, it can be important that you set those boundaries and you say, this is my time, this is the time where I pull away. So that is Do Not Disturb, a very powerful setting with an iOS that everybody should be using and very easy to get set up exactly how you want it. If you don't have Do Not Disturb while driving turned on, go ahead and do that. And I don't know about you, but um, there's this belief that uh, young millennials are the ones that are texting and driving. I have to say, it's been the case that older millennials, like uh, close family members of mine and, and uh, Gen X, uh, I tend to see texting while driving, and I may or may not have set up Do Not Disturb While Driving for family members who fit in that range, and I may or may not have forgotten how to turn it off afterward. So if you have ever been in the car with a family member and you're going, why are you looking at your phone? We're driving right now. You should not be looking at your phone. This can be a great setting to turn on for them so that they, too, can find that self-control and make sure that they are not using their phone while they're driving. So there's a little bit of a pro tip for you, for family members. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Hands on iOS. I do appreciate it. Of course, if you have topics, questions, your favorite apps, whatever it happens to be that you want me to cover, then send those emails to handsonios at twit.tv. I'll be sure to get them there. And of course, you very much do us a huge service by subscribing to the show, twit.tv slash HOI. That's the short link where we've got links to the show in all the formats that it comes in. And if you're on YouTube, that's where you like to watch your stuff, then make sure you head to youtube.com slash hands on iOS. All one word squished together there. Click subscribe, click the like button. I've been told ring the bell, so do that too. I don't know what it means, but do it. And uh, we'll be sure to catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.